Hello, today's lecture is going to be about sociolinguistics. So humans are social beings and language is only acquired in the context of society. And sociolinguistics is the field of linguistics that studies the relationship between language and society. So we can ask questions like, how do social factors and identity influence the way people use language? And in answering this question, we focus on structured variation, how, how people differ speaker to speaker, uh, group to group, how this is based on different social groups. And we also can ask questions about people's attitudes toward language and toward linguistic differences. So we're going to talk about both of these today. We're also going to define languages, dialects, and accents, talk about standards and prestige, and um, then go through some specific examples of social factors that can condition linguistic variation. So to start off with, I want to talk about the difference between a language and a dialect. And there's lots of ideas about what languages and dialects are floating around out there. So I wanted to um, let you see if you can um, guess which of these definitions is um, the sort of technical linguistic definition of, of these two things. So first of all, um, a language is written and a dialect is not written. Is it that? A language is what's taught in school, um, but a dialect is not. Uh, speakers of two dialects of the same language can understand each other, but speakers of two languages can't. Or different dialects are varieties spoken within the same country, and different languages are things spoken in different countries. Now, while all of these are definitions that I've heard people use to refer to the difference between language and dialect, the one usually used by linguists is option C. And so what this means is that uh, the difference between a language and a dialect, usually by linguists, is defined in terms of mutual intelligibility. Mutual intelligibility just means that speakers of two varieties can understand each other. So if you have two people speaking slightly different varieties, but they can understand each other, we say that those are dialects. But if they can't understand each other, then those are languages. So that's a one definition we can use, but the difference isn't actually that straightforward. And also, a lot of times the way people use these terms is, is not reflective of that. So I'm going to talk about some specific examples. So one example is um, that a lot of the languages spoken in China are often referred to as different dialects, um, specifically Mandarin and Cantonese, but also many other so-called dialects of Chinese, like Wu, Shanghainese, Min, um, etc. are considered by speakers to be dialects of the same language. However, these aren't mutually intelligible in spoken form. So from a linguistic perspective, they're different languages. So why are these often considered to be the same language by speakers? There's actually a few reasons in this case. So first, there's a common writing system. And so they are mutually intelligible in written form. They're spoken within the same political boundaries and share a common history, and a lot of people do learn both languages or have exposure to both languages from a young age. And so even though technically these are different languages, we hear them referred to a lot as different dialects. We also have the opposite situation where um, in the North Germanic languages, including Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish, these are usually called separate languages. Everybody, nobody says Norwegian and Swedish is the same language, but speakers of these two languages can actually understand each other. So these are pretty mutually intelligible. So why are they considered different languages? Well, it's probably mostly political. They've been distinct countries for, for many centuries. And um, so even though these, by our definition, are dialects, usually most people call these languages. So the way these terms are used in the field of linguistics doesn't always match up with how they're used in regular discourse. One other distinction I'd like to make is dialect versus accent. So, and this one's a little more straightforward. So accent usually refers specifically to pronunciation. So in this class, that's what we're most interested in, right? The phonetic and phonological characteristics. And note that this is a very neutral term. It, it's, it's so, everybody has an accent. So you can't talk, you can't speak without having an accent because by definition, an accent is just 
the specific phonetic and phonological characteristics you're using. And that's in contrast to dialect, which usually refers to higher level linguistic features like the lexicon and syntax, although a lot of times a dialect will be associated with a specific accent or way of speaking. So language is characterized by a huge amount of variation. So even when you have two people who have what seems like the exact same accent, no two speakers are going to speak exactly alike. And each spe speaker's specific way of talking is called an idiolect. And that's, what, that's the word that we use to refer to um, the particular character, characteristics of that person's speech. However, we also see, we, we do see a lot of systematic variability, uh, and we're going to be talking about that for most of the rest of the, 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 the lecture. Um, so one area that's very familiar to everybody is regional dialects. So there are often systematic differences in the way that a language is spoken in different regions. So um, the English that's spoken in Newfoundland versus Brooklyn versus Texas versus London, England, those all sound very different. Um, same with Spanish versus spoken in Spain versus Latin America or Mandarin spoken in northern versus southern China. And I, I would say that every language has dialectal, has regional dialectal variability, um, although some more than others. And speech communities ha that have a number of different dialects often favor one over the others. And this favored dialect is called the prestige dialect or um, the standard dialect. And prestige just means, uh, in general, higher, higher status. So, for example, in the United Kingdom, uh, there's actually a name for this standard. It's called received pronunciation, and it's the language that, say, the Queen speaks. And most, like I said, most languages have something that most people would consider um, a standard. So how is the standard defined? Well, in some languages, there is literally an official standard. So France is an example of this. They have an organization called the uh, Académie Française. And the role of this organization is literally to, their, their mission is to, to, to try to keep the this, this standard version of French to document it and to have it stay the same. So there's actually literally like a list of rules of what standard French is supposed to be. And these guys um, are in charge of writing those rules down. So that's a case of an official, official standard. But even in languages that don't have an official standard, there are still dialects that people consider more standard than others. And traditionally, the type of speech you hear on the news um, is, has been a benchmark for what the standard is, although these days you do hear a lot more dialectal variability on the news, which is great. Um, but usually the standard is whatever form is spoken by people with more social power, um, so more wealthy, more highly educated, male, basically any um, social asymmetry you can think of. Usually the standard is, the one people think is standard is the one that people with higher power speak. So what about the rest of the dialects? Well, if we look at non-standard dialects, often they're considered less pleasant, um, less educated, less correct. Um, but as you know, from a scientific perspective, no dialect or language is more correct than another. And I just want to give an example, a concrete example here. Um, and so I think we've talked about rhotic dialects before. Um, rhotic consonants are consonants like R, and accents, and we're talking about English here, accents that permit some form of R after vowels and coda position are called rhotic. And most dialects of North American English are rhotic. I speak of rhotic dialect, um, but there are some that aren't. However, in the UK, um, as well as some dialects of North American English, R at the end of words, in more specifically in coda position, is not pronounced or it's realized as a diphthong or glide. So I'm going to play you um, these words spoken in American English and then receive pronunciation. Beer, bear, bar, bore, bore, tour, burr, 
fire, hour, choir. So that was the American, and here's the received pronunciation. And check out this IPA. If you were in class, I would make you say this before you hear it. So actually take a minute and try to say these words with the received pronunciation IPA. Play them for you now. Beer, bear, bar, bore, bore, poor, per, far, ah, coil. <laughs> All right, how about that? Look at this. So, so what are these guys right here? Where I'm pointing. So, here you got not a diphthong but a triphthong. Pretty exciting. Um, yeah, so in in you you probably never thought of these as diphthong, but it's bea, right? It's not be, it's bea. Um, I can't <laughs> my British accent is not very good. Um, okay. So in any case, these are non-rhotic dialects. So question which are considered more standard dialects in English? Rhotic dialects or non-rhotic dialects? And the answer here is, well, it depends where you are, right? So in North America, the rhotic dialect is the standard, so the one with R, car, not ka. But in the UK, the non-rhotic dialect is the, is the standard, right? And so what this shows this is a very clear example that there's nothing inherently more like standard or correct about one of these two types of pronunciations. It's completely arbitrary. The reason that so, and we can tell this because in one um, in one region the rhotic one is standard, and in one region the non-rhotic one is standard. And the non-standard in each of these regions is, stigma is stigmatized and um, looked at as less correct. So again, just to summarize, from a linguistic point of view, which con features are considered standard versus non-standard are completely arbitrary, and Almost always, attitudes toward non-standard dialects or non-standard features in general reflect the social attitudes about the people who speak the dialects, not the linguistic features themselves.